Good evening from Trinity Lutheran Church in Spring Grove, Minnesota. I am Pastor Elizabeth Hermeyer, and welcome to our fifth and final Lenten service. You can see that I don't have a piano behind me or a violin or anything. With our new stay-at-home policy and our new guidelines around having uh, a, a adequate physical distance, it's just me tonight. So I'm continuing our um, Lenten series on becoming a disciple. But before we begin, I would like to start with a word of prayer. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, this is a hard time and it's harder for some than it is for others. We ask as we move into this Holy Week that you continue to be with us in ways that we experience through other people. The little things that we find as we get to go out into the world to walk our dog or as we wave to someone from a window. Lord, there are still ways that we can be together even when we can't be all together. Help us realize those ways and help us still, though we can't be together next week, remember that your dear son came here, lived as one of us, died like one of us, but rose again to eternal victory. In your name we pray, amen. So we have spent the last five weeks since Ash Wednesday talking about how to become a disciple. What does it mean to be a disciple? And boy, has the world changed since that first Ash Wednesday when we held joyful services here at Trinity, one at noon and one at seven and received the ashes on our forehead. Those were, those were wonderful worship services. And even that first uh, worship service when our theme was called and we looked at um, the text from Luke um, about denying ourselves and taking up our cross to follow Jesus. We still had a full house um, that night and uh, learned what it means to make a sacrifice or what it means when Jesus asks us to make a sacrifice, to pick up our cross, just like Jesus carried the cross. And I talked that night about how we all carry the cross of Christ on our forehead from our baptism. And then the following week, we were still able to all be together. Um, Pastor Lane um, preached um, from a Luke text um, about Christ uh, sending out the 70, um, or rather uh, Christ among us as one who serves. And um, the text from Luke 22 um, on that day was all about how Jesus equips us to go out into the world not in a way that we would think of as um, having equipment, not with you know um, a coat and and you know particular tools that we might have for the job, but Jesus equips us by reminding us what it means to be a servant. Jesus is a, the ultimate example of servanthood. And then the following week, um, that's when things really started to change. Um, that third week of Lent. Um, Pastor Lane preached on Luke 10 and the sending out of the 70 and how um, Jesus talked about them as lambs amongst the wolves and how they should bring peace to all who welcome it. But if the people don't welcome it, take their peace back. And we were just then starting to get guidelines about um, what it means to, to be in this new um, situation that we are in all across the world and, and I remember that Pastor Lane talked and gave us a challenge about maybe calling one or two or three of our neighbors or maybe calling somebody else that we haven't talked to in a very long time. I think that was a great example of um, something that we can all do is just to pick up the phone and, and maybe it's the person who usually sits next to you in church um, and just give them a call, or maybe it's your college roommate. Last week, um, Pastor Elliot Malm um, from Mabel First was here and preached on the John text. Um, and um, I know that the, the, um, 
microphones weren't working well that night, if you were one of those people who couldn't hear very well, the, the text of his sermon is now up on the Trinity website, and so you can go there and read it. Um, but um, he, he talked again about you know, what it means that Jesus is um, supporting us through all of this, and, and Jesus uses the words, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you orphaned. And that brings us to this week in our journey on becoming a disciple. And before um, I um, got going, get going into the sermon, I just um, wanted to do a few words that I will read, not sing, from our Holden Evening Prayer text. Normally we would be singing this, um, but I just have me here in the office. So Holden Evening Prayer always um, starts out, um, Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. And then we go into that wonderful hymn on joyous light of heaven, heavenly glory, which, again, I'm not going to sing. Um, but I will do the part of um, the, the Thanksgiving. So may God be with you all and let us sing our thanks to God because it is right to give our, our God thanks and praise. So blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright for your word and your presence are the light of our pathways and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Normally at this point, we would also then read um, Psalm 141, and it's got this beautiful first line, um, let my prayer rise up like incense before you. So next week, um, after uh, Palm Sunday, um, if you have driven by Trinity Lutheran in Spring Grove recently, you probably have noticed that we have a cross on the lawn on the south side of the church. And right now it's got some purple and um, kind of beige um, checked cloth in it. And it sits right next to the railings that go up to that door of the church. So beginning next week, um, we are going to start placing ribbons um, on the the um, railing next to that church and kind of like um, prayer ribbons. So over the next week, as you go by, keeping um, appropriate physical distance, maybe bring a ribbon or a prayer request and just tie it onto that railing. And um, over the course of the week, um, going up to, to Easter, we will fill that railing with our prayers and our prayers will be together, um, even though we cannot be together. So in the Psalm 141, the psalmist says, let our prayers rise up like incense. Well, what we are gonna do next week is let our prayers rise up like ribbons. Um, so I can't wait to see all of those ribbons filling the railing um, during Holy Week. So let us pray again. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. So as I um, mentioned, tonight is the last night um, of our Lenten services, and tonight the theme in Becoming a Disciple, remember we had called and equipped and sent and supported, and tonight it's prepared. Um, the theme for tonight is prepared. Um, how does Jesus prepare us to become a disciple? And so our text for tonight is from Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here ends the gospel. Thanks be to God. So this text from Matthew 28 is um, often called the Great Commission. 
This is um, the commission that Jesus gives us, the, the, um, the orders, the, the marching orders, as it were, um, that he gives his disciples immediately after the, the resurrection and um, the, the days that he spends with him, those last 40 days, and right before he ascends into heaven. And it's, it's hard to even imagine that moment. You know, I, I always think about what it was like for the disciples to have spent three years with Jesus and watching him preach and teach and perform miracles and signs and wonders. And then during that last awful week, to have him taken from them and to watch him die and then rise again miraculously only to be taken from them again. I mean, their emotions must be all over the place and very similar to how our emotions must be all over the place right now. So this great commission that Jesus gives to, him, to them is huge, right? I mean, they are supposed to go out and, and make disciples of all nations, not just the one nation that they're in, but all nations go across the world and baptize them. Just, you know, the only people who'd really baptized before this was John and, and Jesus. And, you know, and um, teaching them. And, you know, it's, it's kind of um, really intimidating. It must have been even more intimidating for them. But I think now for us, you know, these this great commission um, is even more challenging. You know, so the first thing Jesus says, go therefore, and yet the orders that we've been given are stay at home. So Jesus tells us to go, and the government tells us to stay, and staying, frankly, right now is the right thing to do because we need to protect ourselves and to protect the people around us, especially the older folks and the folks who might have a more immunized, uh, compromised immune system. And of course, because of our healthcare workers, we need to make sure that we don't overwhelm the healthcare system. So it's kind of hard to imagine how we can make this go therefore happen. And yet we have done remarkable things. Churches all around the world have done remarkable things even as we are not able to gather together to go and do some of these things. We have um, these, this new technology called Zoom. Just right before I had the, uh, this Lenten service, we started this Lenten service, we had Zoom confirmation. We had 45 people on the Zoom meeting. Each of them was in their own home. Each of the kids, each of the mentors. I gave a lecture, each of the kids heard it. Then Becca did something with the magic of technology. They broke up into their small mentor groups. They had wonderful conversations. We all came back together and said the Lord, Lord's Prayer. So one way that we can go, therefore, is to Zoom. We can Zoom, therefore. Another way that we have been going, therefore, that we have never done before is this way, Facebook Live. Um, I have to be honest, I don't particularly like cameras. Um, I never thought I was going to be a TV preacher, and yet here I am. I'm coming to you live from my office. This was not something we ever contemplated even three weeks ago that we would be doing. But we are able to go into the world via Facebook Live. And then, through the magic of technology, we are able to save this service onto YouTube, and we can go and look at it anytime we want to. So we can go live and then we can go to YouTube. It's really quite amazing how we are still able to go, therefore, just as Jesus commanded us. Not to mention all the things we have been doing over the last few years anyway. We are still able to go via text and go via email and even go via the old-fashioned telephone that many of us still have. So even though we are called to stay at home for the benefit of those around us, we are still able to go therefore into the world. Now you ask, what about this baptizing? We can't really baptize when we have to stay six feet away, can we? Well, no, we can't. <laughs> we, we can't like, you know, squirt water to, to baptize um, a child or a baby or an adult. But baptism is about more than just that moment when we bring the baby or the child up to the baptismal font and sprinkle the water on it. 
Baptism, as, as a theologian said, is this one-time event that actually takes a life, lifetime to complete. So that cross that we received in our baptism, we carry that with us always. But the bottom line is, too, that God calls us even as we're in our mother's wombs. And that baptism through um, the water is something that happens later. But we were adopted by God long before we ever got put in the arms of our parents or our sponsors or the pastor to get the water on um, put, sprinkled on our head. So we're not going to baptize via Zoom or email or uh, Facebook or YouTube, I don't think. But we are still able to reach out to families and talk about baptism um, that will happen later on when this is all over. So what else does Jesus? Jesus says, you know, go therefore, make disciples, baptize in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Spirit, and teach. So this seems to me like the, the gimme on this whole thing, that we are called to teach. And we have many ways that are doing this. All of these schools around the country and around the world are already doing distance learning with all of these kids. And as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we did confirmation, our core confirmation course um, via this Zoom technology. It's still very possible to teach and to even get feedback. Um, with all of the wonderful technology that we have. So um, a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about. Um, the, the Great Commission um, in this teaching is still a little challenging because Jesus says, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Holy cow, I mean everything that I've commanded you? Now let's think about that for a minute. Everything that Jesus commanded us. But here's the key. This great commission goes along with a great commandment. Because really the only thing that Jesus ever commanded us to do was to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And that's something that we can do no matter whether we're supposed to stay at home or stay within six feet of someone or what. We can always teach people to love God and love their neighbor by our own example. Part of our example is staying home to keep people safe right now. That's how we show our love for our neighbor and ourselves for that matter. And our, our showing our love for God, how we show our love for God is how we love our neighbor. Probably one of the most comforting things in these three little verses is remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As I'm sitting here alone in my office, I'm staring at my phone. I don't know how many people are reading this right now, but I know that God is with me. God is with you. God is with all of us. This seems right now on April 1st to be a long, hard process. We've been at it for two or three weeks now and we've got several weeks or more to go before we're at the end of this time, this unknown and scary time. God is with us even to the end of the age. This great commission that Jesus gave to his disciples, I wanna go back to a verse that I didn't read in verse 17, Jesus, uh, right before Jesus speaks, Matthew's gospel says, when they saw him, meaning the disciples, they worshiped him, but some doubted, some doubted. And then Jesus says to them, the great commission, some doubted. It's so easy. It's, it's so easy to have doubts right now. And it's not, um, there's, there's no, um, reason any of us wouldn't have doubts when we look at what's happening around us. But remember, God is with us always, even to the end of the age. When Jesus gave this great commission, there were just a few disciples left. And now there are 2.2 billion Christians in the world. Think about that, 2.2 billion Christians. And it started with this great commission. So as I'm sitting here alone in my room, wherever you are, the same thing. We feel like right now we can't do too much together because we can't. But just 11 or 12 people 
all those years ago started this church and we are the church in the world. So it's doable. Jesus is with us always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So normally now, um, I would say the light shines in the darkness and you would all say, and the darkness has not overcome it. And we would sing a song of the Annunciation. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to um, pray the litany and prayers that comes at the end of Holden Village. So um, let us pray. God of mercy, hold us in love. In peace we pray to you. For peace and salvation we pray to you. For peace between nations, for peace between peoples. For us who are gathered to worship and praise you. For all of your servants who live out your gospel. For all those who govern, that justice might guide them. For all those who labor in service to others. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So wherever you are, wherever you are, remember us in your love and teach us to pray, Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so for our final blessing, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord shine a light on you. May the Lord look upon you with grace and mercy and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night.